Okay, we've learned lots of neat tricks involving array formulas. And in this video, I want to show you a really neat trick that involves the sum of product function that we use with Solver that sort of emulates or imitates array formulas. Okay, so let's do a conditional product. So here's an example. So we have our salespeople in column F. We have the products they sell in column G. And we have the number of units in each transaction and the price. And what we want to know is for each person, total dollar sales of each product. Okay, first of all, we need a list of every product person combination because not every person may have sold each product. So we can get that with remove duplicates. And then we need something, not a sum FS, not a count FS. We could probably do this with a race. But the sum of product has a really cool use that was perfect for conditional products. In other words, if we do Katie selling soda, we want to take for every row where Katie sold soda, take the units times the price and add them up. So it's a conditional product and a sum in a sense. Well, first, let's remove duplicates to find out each person product combination. So I could do right click, move or copy. Okay, we can make a copy because we don't want to record data. Okay, so we can go right here. Now we can just select these two columns and we can go data, we can go remove duplicates. Data has headers, we want person and product. Okay, and there we go. So we've got 14 person product combinations and we could sort this if we wanted. So we might sort on the person, doesn't matter, and then the product, copy level. Okay, so notice there are 14 combinations of person and product here. Okay, Apple is a person's name, not a product here. Okay, so I would copy these to the original worksheet. Okay. So, like, I want to know every time Apple was the person and Candy was the product, I want to know the product of the units and the price. Okay, well, now let's create range names. So, we can, I could select this range with Control Shift, right arrow, down arrow. A cooler way may be Control Shift, asterisk. Okay, that'll select a, uh, a complete range. Or Control Shift, right arrow, down arrow is fine. But I could do formulas, create from selection names in top row. Okay, so I've got the name person, I've got the name price, I've got the name product, I've got the name units. Now here's the really cool, cool formula. So total revenue. Okay, so you know, sum of, pro sum of product takes a row times a row or a column times a column. But what you can do is manipulate it to look like an array formula. So you'd say sum of product, you put two minus signs, so it'll recognize what we're doing as a formula. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to take those person, the range name, equal what's here, wrong cell, sorry about that. So we would say some product, and then we need the two minus signs, so what we're going to put here will be recognized as a formula. It's just a clever Excel trick. So we're going to say does the product equal what's here, and then we're going to multiply it. It'll put a one there if the product would equal, equal Apple. In other words, what's in the product range equals Apple. And then we'd multiply it times those the uh, person. It should be person equals Apple. And then we would multiply that times does the product equal, let's say, candy. Okay, and then we just put comma, the columns we want to multiply, which are the units column and the price column. That's just the syntax of how this works. So that would be the price range, which is right there. Okay, and it's not really an array formula, but that formula works as follows. We look at every row, the person column, and if that equals, let's say, apple here, then we put a one, otherwise a zero. We do product equals candy, and if there's a one in that row, we put a one, otherwise a zero. So the only way you're going to get a one there is if the person equals apple and the product equals candy, and then we would take units times price, not like that. Okay, so that should work. 
And that's exactly right. And we can sort of prove this here because there's only one entry. Taylor with magazines is 61 times uh, 247. Okay, so there, that would be this 150.67. We should format it as dollars. And if you want to see that formula, I can use the great formula text function. But that's really quite amazing. And that can really replace a lot of what we did this summer product trick with array functions in a much easier to understand fashion. You know, I didn't have to hit control shift enter there. So again, the minus minus makes what's in multiplied together here recognized as a formula. We get a one whenever the person equals apple and the product equals candy. Okay, for each of those, and we need them both to be one to get a one, otherwise we'll get a zero. And so whenever the person is apple and the product is candy, we multiply the units times the price, otherwise we get zero. So there we get a conditional product, a sum of conditional products, which is really quite cool. And notice that only two people sold magazines, so not everybody sold every product. So we really did need to do the remove duplicates. Okay, so thanks for watching, and, and there's a free course, a free 21-day course from Dr. Winston, um, and all of these videos are coming from one of three books. So first, this one, which you can see here at the top of the screen, um, Microsoft's book, which has 355 reviews, uh, and then it's, let's see, 4.6 stars. Um, it's coming from this book as well, his marketing analytics book, which is down here, and you can sort of see 4.5, or his newest book, his analytics stories book, which is here. And with that one, you can see it's four point something, or maybe even five. I don't think it's five. Yeah, 4.8. And so, yeah, anyways, in the description, there's a free 21-day course from Dr. Winston, um, or you can go to excelwithwayne.com slash free, and it'll be there. But again, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, just uh, please let us know. Thanks.